Lawyers of Reddit, what was your oh shit moment in court? Reposting myself from years ago. Story from a friend of mine. He was defending a guy in court. Don't remember what he was charged with. The main witness for prosecution was on the stand and was asked if she could identify the defendant. She was scanning the courtroom and seemed confused. My friend was already silently celebrating because if she couldn't identify him, he could probably get all charge dropped. As he was mentally adding this case to the win file, he happened to glance over at his client who had just helpfully raised his hand to make it easier for her to identify him. Even the judge fassa palmed on that one. Wow, that's some special kind of stupid. Never ask a question to which you don't know the answer. Prosecutor suggested to me client that the canned goods he had burgled were to be used to trade for drugs. Me thinking the idea ludicrous asked my client whether he has ever traded food for drugs. To which he replied that he once exchanged a frozen chicken for heroin. Needless to say, I didn't win that one. This is so true and sucks so bad in family court hearings because there's so rarely an opportunity to know how the witness is going to testify. Also, you can't legally tell them what to say, but you can go over hypothetical questions the prosecutor might ask and see how they'll answer. Sat in the public gallery at a bail hearing for a man accused of heinous crimes against a very very young female relative. The judge started laying out the conditions of bail, and one of them was to surrender his passport. Man turned to his attorney and said, loudly, words to the effect of, but you said I could fly back to my home country. The judge stopped himself and revoked the man's bail. Edit, this post brought to you by the words flight and risk. Also, his home country was out of reach of extradition. Edit again, this was not in the USA. Every country has foreigners. I want to see the attorney's face in that moment. Thinking gosh, did I say that, you fucking child monster? The judge had almost finished when. He raised a hand and thought again. He frowned, fatigued, and rubbed an eye. He breathed a single weary sigh. The judge remained in silence still, without a word to say until. He rose and turned his gaze below. He whispered softly, slowly. No. I was prosecuting a contempt action in family court, something that basically never works, and everyone in the room could tell I was winning. The other side was unprepared, out of arrogance, and I was basically ripping this guy to shreds on cross-examination, which his lawyer didn't even think would happen, because he expected the case to be dismissed. At the end of the trial, the judge ruled for me and stated that she found the defendant's testimony to be untrustworthy. I was shocked at winning a contempt trial to begin with, but then this exchange happened. Defendant's attorney, your honor, now that you have found my client's testimony to be untrustworthy, I'm requesting a continuance in order to prepare further witnesses. This concept is shocking in and of itself. Because to even think you can bring more witnesses, after you rest your case is laughable. Judge, you had your shot and you missed, counsel. Defendant's attorney, your honor, there was no way I could have anticipated that you'd find my client's testimony untrustworthy and as such, I didn't have the opportunity to prepare other witnesses in support of his position. Judge, that may be an argument for your career, counsel but it holds no water with me. See you this afternoon for sentencing. For those who didn't pick up on it, the judge basically told the lawyer on the record in front of his client that she expects him to get sued for malpractice because he fucked up so royally. That shit was men bloning on multiple levels. I was the defendant representing a non-profit that I volunteered for. The plaintiff was a 60-something grandma who was looking for a retirement settlement after falling out of her jacked up pickup truck in our parking lot. The premise of her case was that our parking lot was in bad shape, it was, and that she fell into a pothole and broke her leg, which resulted in her having to take Carmadin and diminished her enjoyment of salads at the Friday night fish fry. No, really. It was going along fine 
until my lawyer put up a photo of the pothole, taken the day of the incident, filled to the brim with water, after a recent rain. He asked the lady, if she had gotten her foot wet, to which she replied, that she couldn't recall. He talked a little more about how perhaps, if her foot wasn't wet, it might have been, because she fell out of the truck, and didn't really fall into the pothole. He asked again, if her foot was wet, and she affirmed that yes, her foot was wet. The oh shit moment came, when he went back to his desk, flipped through her deposition and read the part, where she was extremely adamant, that her foot wasn't wet. Then he did some fancy legal stuff, the case was thrown out, and I went back to work. I was the dumps, that almost screwed myself. I had two charges in two different courts. I accepted the first plea which almost always carries probation, but my plea didn't have that condition. When it came time to accept the second plea, the prosecutor didn't include probation, because she assumed my first charge put me on probation. She said as much to the judge and me being a big dummy almost corrected her. My lawyer grabbed my shoulder and, I shit you not, told me to shut the FCK up, she doesn't know. Never interrupt your enemy when they are making a mistake. Opposing counsel was a nightmare. Everything late, his work was extremely subpar, and so forth. Accused me of lying multiple times when he had dropped the ball. During another hearing in which he did another dumb move, judge says I'm glad you are the last case on the call, and all of the other attorneys have left the room, so they aren't here to hear me say that you are a terrible attorney. I cover courts for a local paper, so I see a lot of cases. There are only two really bad lawyers I've seen that stand out, and one was almost exactly as you described, he would constantly get things wrong, and then accuse the prosecutor of mixing things up to confuse the jury, or whatever. I swear he appeared to be asleep at one point. Maybe his case was so bad he was angling for poor assistance of counsel, who knows. But both were so terrible that I was shocked by A, their rages, as they had to have been doing it for some time and B, their fucking gall. Like, both were just so brazen in court that it bordered on contempt. Ah, nothing like the confidence on a mediocre attorney. Person I was representing was on trial for assault in the third degree in DUI. In my state, A3 means you've assaulted an aid worker or police officer and is a felony. The allegations are that he was very verbally abusive to the officers and, at one point, kicked one in the face. We are sitting at the defendant's table and the officer is testifying about the statements my guy made to him, including some pretty horrific name calling. Out of nowhere, my client screams you're a fucking liar. Fuck you, you son of a bitch. We lost that trial. Another time, the judge asked a client whether anyone had coerced him into pleading guilty, and he said yeah, my attorney. I about shit my pants, but he laughed and said, I'm joking. No. Are jokes like that taken at face value, or was the judge cool with it? Pretty straight lace judge in a full courtroom. He was fine with it, though. I was just interning in court during law school, but I'm a lawyer now. Fight in a club. Someone had broken someone else's jaw and had six friends with him that insisted he had been identified wrongly because he never have a beard and the victim said he had a beard. They used a very specific phrasing to the tune of my friend doesn't have facial hair because he is a professional in the food industry and it would go against the regulations. After three of the witnesses had repeated the same exact phrasing, the judge stopped one to ask if he knew what a couple of the terms in that line meant and the witness couldn't explain it. Defense lawyer got busted for instructing the witnesses. She'd also gotten the defendant to reject a plea deal that exchanged prison time for a fine and community service. What terms did they have trouble explaining? That's like 6th grade language, tops. I accidentally deleted my own comment it was in Spanish. The term was something like professional del sector de la restauración, and it sounded weird as fuck. He worked in fast food. I was at a hearing arguing 
that my client was wrongfully terminated because the employer failed to abide by the proper procedures during the hearing a witness for the employer tried to offer documents that were fraudulently altered in order to make it look like the proper procedure was followed I noticed the alteration opposing counsel quickly got that witness out of the room and after a quick adjournment my client got a large settlement was the alteration that obvious it was an age discrimination case it wasn't a very strong case but one of our arguments was that my client's supervisor railroaded him by terminating him without following the proper procedures this employer a government entity is supposed to give its employees certain number of days of advanced notice before a termination during discovery the employer disclosed documents that indicated that they they didn't give the client proper advanced notice during the hearing the witness shows up with the same paperwork but with completely different dates indicating that they did give him the proper notice the alteration was obvious to me because I was going to examine that witness as to the date so once I looked at the document she was giving me, it was obvious that something was wrong their lawyer had earlier given me an entirely different set of documents. I should mention that this was a hearing before a civil service commission and not an article III court, so discovery was a little less rigid. Anyways, their forgery turned a weak case into a strong case. Not exactly in court. But I was defending a juvenile robbery case, where there was very little evidence. There was supposed to be two guys, but they only picked up this one kid, he had no stolen property on him, he was picked up like outside his own house, wearing different clothes than the victim had initially said. This kid was on the honor roll at school, his family seemed kind and were involved, he wrote poetry and played instruments. I actually believed it was a legit mistaken identity case. I went to meet with one of the kid's mentors for a character reference, and he exactly matched the description of the other robber. Lawyer here. I had a pre-trial conference at 9am at a court about 2 hours away. So I wake my ass up super early to drive in shitty weather to the conference. I get there, and we are waiting for the other, in town, attorney. All the while I'm grumbling to myself about how I'm from out of town and I can still make it on time. Finally the court calls the other attorney's office and gets a receptionist who tells us through tears that other attorney passed away the night before. Needless to say I was just happy to still be alive and we rescheduled for a few months later. I was interning during law school prosecuting domestic violence cases. The deputy DA asked me to talk for the first time during a guy's arraignment for beating his wife. An arraignment is when the defendant hears the charges against them and pleads guilty or not guilty basically. When the judge calls on me to speak, I got insanely nervous and told the defendant that his charge carried a maximum penalty of 30 years when it was actually 30 days. He freaks out the crowd. Some in the gallery were his family and friends, gasps. The judge basically stops me and says I think you mean 30 days counselor. After which everyone, including the defendant, laughed at me. Edit because a lot of you are worried about this, the evidence was pretty weak and the facts did not bear charging anything other than the lowest level misdemeanor, which, in conjunction with this being a first offense meant that we were seeking two things primarily, counseling slash anger management classes, and probation. The intent being, that any future problems can hopefully be avoided, and if not, we could stick the defendant with a harsh punishment the next time, when we'd hopefully have better facts slash evidence. <laughs>